Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video. Today I wanted to make a shorter video showcasing five awesome extensions for Visual Studio Code. I won't be giving you a full demo or tutorial on any of these extensions, but just briefly discussing what they do and showcasing some of their functionality. So with that said, let's dive in. So I'm going to start by just showing you how to install an extension. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is open up Visual Studio Code, click on the extensions pane, and then you can search for different extensions in the VS Code marketplace. Now, once you find the extension you want, you can just press install. VS Code may need to reload. And then once it does, you've installed the extension, you can start using it. Once you've installed all of the extensions, you can manage them, enable them, disable them, and so on within the extensions list. So if you open up the extensions tab, you'll see all of the extensions you have installed there. And then you can also select an installed extension and press the gear icon to manage its specific settings. All right, so the first extension I have to show you is called Code Spell Checker. This extension does exactly what it says. It checks for spelling mistakes as you write code. By default, VS Code will check some spelling, but it's not the best and it only does so in specific file types. But Code Spell Checker will highlight any word it sees that is not in the dictionary and provide spelling suggestions for you. It's smart enough to understand camel case, snake case, Pascal case, etc., and it won't flag compound words in things like variable names. To fix a word that is spelled incorrectly, you can press on the quick fix button that appears after highlighting the word, so putting your cursor over any of those blue squiggly lines, or you can simply press control plus period, that's the keyboard shortcut that will bring up all of the suggestions for the different words. So the next extension on my list is called Prettier. Prettier is a very popular extension that provides auto code formatting for most programming languages. It's especially useful in HTML, JavaScript, and other languages where there's a lot of nested blocks and opening and closing tags. After you install Prettier, you can configure your formatting by pressing Control plus Shift plus P or Command Shift P on Mac, and that is going to open up the command palette. Once the command palette is open, you can type format. There should be something there that says uh, format document with. You can press that and then select your default formatter if you do have multiple of them. For most of you, you'll probably just have one and then you'll just have one option to select, obviously. Now, by default, whenever you save your document, Prettier will actually format it for you. So if you want to manually format your document, not by saving, what you can do is simply open up the command palette and you can use format document with, select the formatter, and then it will format the document for you. Now, if you want to save your document without formatting it, because sometimes it will format stuff that you don't want, what you can do is uh, open up the command palette again, and then you can simply press save without formatting. Now, if you want to change any of the default behavior of Prettier, what you can do is select the Prettier extension from your extensions tab, press on the little settings or gear icon, and then select the extension settings. That will allow you to look through some of the options there and change kind of how it's formatting and what file extensions it will format for. Lastly, though, if you want to make it so that by default, your document is not going to be formatted on save, what you have to do is go into the VS Code settings. So go into the VS Code settings, that's the big gear icon, then you can type format and you should see some option that says format on save. Just uncheck that and then that will remove that default behavior. Moving on, the third extension I have to show you is called Bracket Colorizer 2. This is the new version of the original bracket colorizer that simply colors corresponding brackets such that it's easier to see where each block starts and ends. Now we'll do that with parentheses, brackets, uh, angle brackets, square brackets, squiggly brackets, all the different types of brackets. And really there's not much more to say about this one. Some people love this extension. Some people hate it and think it looks silly. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Now the next extension I have to show you is called Git Lens. So this is an add on for Git. Now Git is integrated by default in VS Code. And so you can already do a lot of Git related stuff in Visual Studio Code. But what Git Lens allows you to do is see more information about the code that you're working in in the Git repository. So specifically, you can see things like authorship, modifications, you can go and look through all of the commit history and just gives you a better user interface than the default interface you have uh, with VS Code by default. What it also does is provide file annotations related to commits, authorships, and also provides a bunch of different views for navigating revisions and changes. So to demonstrate this, I'll open up the commit view by going to the version control pane in VS Code and then toggling the commit sidebar menu. Here you can see and view all of the commit history, file changes, and more related to the current repository. And as you can see here, there's a bunch of other different views you can click on. So below the commit view, you can look at the file history view, the branch view, so on and so forth. 
Now the final extension I have to show you is extremely useful, especially if you work with VS Code on multiple machines, and that is called Settings Sync. Now as the name suggests, this will allow you to sync all of your VS Code settings, keybinds, extensions, extension settings, and more across all of your different devices. You do need to manually configure and install this extension on all of your different devices before this will work, but it's pretty straightforward to do that. You simply install the extension, sign up with GitHub, and then it's going to ask you to select an existing gist or to skip, and then it will create one for you. This is something that's kind of stored by GitHub. Then what you can do once you've set up your gist is you can use shift alt u to upload all of your settings and shift alt d to download all of your settings. Now, if you're on Mac, you can simply replace the alt key with the option key in those commands. So shift option u shift option D to upload and download respectively. Now there's a bunch of other settings you can mess around with this. So I'd recommend you read through the extension homepage, the one that you get when you actually just click on the extension before you upload or download any of your settings, because you can kind of mess it up pretty easily if you don't know what you're doing. But I found this extension extremely useful. And if you spend a few minutes reading about it, it definitely saves you a ton of time, especially if you're working on multiple machines like I do all of the time with VS. All right, so there you go. Those are five great VS Code extensions that you can use regardless of the language you're using in VS Code. Now, before I end the video, I'll mention that there are many other great extensions as well, but many of these are language specific. So like the Python extension, React and JS snippets, C and C++, Go, Jupyter, so on and so forth. There's like hundreds of thousands of extensions for Visual Studio Code. Now, if you're working in a specific language, obviously it makes sense to install that language's respective extension. So if you're working in Python, install the Python extension. All right. So with that said, I'm going to end the video here. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. Do you like these kind of shorter type videos where it's just very quick information, not going into a ton of detail, or do you prefer more detailed in-depth explanations of all of this stuff? Anyways, let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like subscribe and I will see you in another one.